up to the bow and get a shot of that. You can see the current is so strong. We're fighting the current right now. So that makes it harder to pull the net in? Yeah, it makes it harder to pull the net in and also uh, the fish are, you know, just going right through because the nets just go to the bottom. We've had this net soaking for over an hour and Huh? Yeah, so. All right. Three, yeah, last night we couldn't even pull this net in. We filled it up, we filled the boat up, and I ended up cutting my net. It was either that or shovel overboard. So I cut it and went back and retrieved the other 40 feet or so. It was either that sink or shovel fish overboard. And I chose to cut it. Since I got a late start, everybody's got to jump on me. this side we're gonna go let the current work work with us this time Slim pickings. Well, the current is too strong. Fish usually run at slack tide or incoming tide. You may get to see some uh, subsistence kelpers this evening. There was a lot of heavy spawn the last two days here in this cove. We're going to take you down to the point. You'll get. You might get to see. Uh, you'll get to see a lot of murs, kittiwakes, uh, seagulls, and if we're lucky, we might see a puffin. Just go close to the beach. Show them all the birds and stuff. Here? Yeah. Just we'll just go close to the beach. Maybe he wants to show them driving that old thing. Yeah.
they've pretty much driven out the uh, MERS, but we will see some MERS further down at the point. But these guys, uh, the older people have uh, said that they've been taking over the nesting areas for the MERS. Time. Okay. What are you saying? That point there? That point there is the main uh, cliff climbing area for uh, mer eggs. And in the old days, before we had store bought eggs, um, families would come over here and pick thousands or hundreds of eggs and divvy them up amongst the families. And it would be a whole family outing. And that's that point over there. How much did that cost? The stick, the stick. Where you see the sticks when they cliff climb, they'd put a rope up and go around and they'd go up and use a rope and go along and get the eggs. Usually there's a lot of mirrors all along the, these uh, ledges here. You can see four right there. Yeah. Somebody that's that's watching this like on the other side of the state, what do what do mer eggs taste like? What? What do what do mer eggs taste like when you eat them? Mer eggs? Yeah. That, that, they're something like they're a lot bigger than um, about that big, and they're a lot bigger than chicken eggs. They're, they're good. Right here when it's like winter that's when we like we slide all the way down that you know <laughs> we go pretty fast you know down this rocky thing right from the top we slide all the way down and stop before that big rock comes That's good, they're easy to get when they're flying. It's like hunting.
get back by you here. This is uh, one of the fish and game camps, and uh, they have two in Norton Sound, one at Cape Denby and one at Clickatary. And we do provide uh, interns for Department of Fish and Game through NSCDC internship program. And um, they take, or they set nets with various mesh sizes, and um, they take scale samples and measure the fish and kind of determines what the um, future quota would be. It's based on, you know, the say if they got the majority of their fish with uh, two and a half, that means they got a lot of young recruits coming in. And they could set the quotas uh, pretty good. This year the quota is 4,350 metric tons, I believe. And um, that could be based on the survey that was done maybe two or three years ago on uh, the recruitments coming up and it's done here and there's also like I said another camp down at Clickatary. So uh, I just seen the two guys go by but I seen three people on board so we might have an intern on there. Um, but they've been here for uh, maybe 15 years or more. And how long do they stay out here every year? Uh, until they're pulled out, they'll they'll stay out here maybe uh, sometimes a month or more. Actually, leave her still for some minutes, I can get a shot. Not too often they have to come over here. This. Over here, this grassy knoll. Yes. That's, um, diggings, uh, Giddens diggings, and uh, one time it was one of the oldest sites known, but since they found older sites in Alaska, so off this grassy knoll, it's a lot more visible on the other side, and people still go up there once in a while and dig for artifacts. Yeah, you were. Now, what were you saying? Say what you were saying again. That's. How old is the, the site up there? Like 4,000 or something? Yeah. 4,000 4, years old. And Giddings was a pretty renowned um, archaeologist and he spent some time up here and Ben's um, grandfather was uh, one of the uh, locals that assisted him. Well, I'll head back to the other side. Sounds good. Too bad the MERS weren't in. There's a lot of history here. There's an old uh,
Sometimes it gets a little uh, tenuous out here when you know you've been out for 36 hours. <laughs> so, uh, when you come out, well, you know, are you usually out for one day. How does it usually work? Well, um, till they um, fill up a tender, or right now they're, I think they're pretty close to 600 tons. And the uh, processing ship can handle 180, no, 140 tons a day, I believe. And uh, with that many, that much tonnage, they could just buy for so much because the Japanese don't want fish that are more than three days old. So once they get the um, like three, four hundred ton, then they start limiting the fishermen to. Uh, so many hours of fishing and it depends on the catch because the, the ship the ship can st still can the ship could still process hurry up beat Palmer hurry up hurry up beat Palmer there, there's Palmer coming in otherwise we'll stay in line forever don't pull, don't pull, don't pull, don't pull, you're hurting me. Don't pull. Uh, well, get your hands off from the bottom. Palmer to the uh, tender boat because he's got a boat load and it might take you, uh, you know, an uh, hour to unload him and that means we just got to wait till he's all unloaded. So we don't have too much fish here and I can see there's one boat at the tender already. So the faster you get done delivering, you can head home. Now when you come out, do you usually stay out you know, just a day or you stay out for two days or what? Well, it depends. Um, this trip, we were out for 36 hours, and um, due to tenders uh, filling up, because uh, a lot of fish was caught during the evening hours, and we got a late start. Uh, we came out three days after the season opened, so we're kind of playing catch up right now, and not doing too well. Made a few mistakes. It's, uh, it's still fun. You know, I've got family out with me, and uh, I took a week off from work. What is it? And speaking of things like that, what does it mean to you to be able to come out here and, and do this? Well, it means a lot to me because I've done it, you know, for uh, maybe 20 odd years now, and I still think about it every time spring rolls around, and I. I think in the, since I've worked for NSEDC, I've missed uh, four seasons. And I'm on my 10th year with NSEDC, and I've come back out here mainly when the boys ask me if I would like, if they were going herring fishing, you know, so. The other times I was the buyer or, you know, the uh, joint venture operation with Icicle Seafoods or Trident Seafoods and our Pollock partner back in 93 and 94 purchased Herring Glacier Fish Company.
Ben. You ever have some muck duck? I have. Huh? Get it, Tyson. 